All right. Can everybody hear me okay? I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. It has been a wonderful evening here, and the last eight months have been an incredible journey for me. Indeed, the last two years have been an incredible journey because I got to meet some of the greatest people of my life in these families from Uvalde, Texas. I love them, and I love all of my friends in Uvalde, every, each and every parent that lost a child, the families that lost two wonderful teachers that died trying to protect this, their children. I stopped crying about elections a long time ago, so you won't see me cry over that spilt milk. We've got a fight that's still yet to go in this state, and we're going to make sure we do that. But I cry every day over their children. Now, that's a conversation that we need to have. I, uh, about five minutes ago, I called a congressman to congratulate him. And we got to give him that. He worked hard. We got to give him his, his due. And so um, we called to concede this thing today. But I also asked him to understand how important this issue is in this state and in this nation. So many of you have said that we're just running on gun violence. Indeed, we're running on so many things that are broken in this state. And yes, the principal reason for my running was these families behind me and their children. And I'm telling you right here, right now, just like I talked to the congressman earlier, we need an assault weapons ban in this country. So as the congressman moves forward, I hope that he understands that that issue is so important to even all South Texans that own guns like myself, that we need to have extreme risk protective orders and universal background checks and age limits and absolutely this assault weapons ban because this is a weapon of war that should not be in our schools and should not be sold to 18-year-olds under no certain terms. But we're broken on everything. I ran into a woman today, and her name was Tammy, over at Maury Maverick School. I said, how are you doing? She says, not so good. I lost my nephew yesterday. I said, well, what happened? Tell me about it. She said, I lost him in a fire in the panhandle. Imagine this, a woman in San Antonio, Texas, telling me that she lost her volunteer firefighter nephew who left behind three kids just yesterday in the fires in the panhandle. His name was Zeb Smith. I didn't know this woman from nothing. That's how broken we are in this state because Republicans have made decisions for us and they've prioritized certain things the whole panhandle is on fire, and we don't even own one damn fire retardant plane in this state. That is the state that Greg Abbott and Ted Cruz and Donald Trump would rather have us living in. They have screwed us over on just about everything, just like they screwed over these families. Just like those cops stayed out there for 77 minutes because they were afraid of a gun. We're absolutely broken on these issues. Just like we're broken because Kate Cox had to flee this state just to get reproductive freedom, just to save her own life. We are broken in this state. We are broken in this state when we have an attorney general who is nothing but a crook. Nothing but a crook. And he sits there while he gave these families $1,000 for their pain and suffering, less than any other mass shooting in this state. We are broken on so many things. And as we sat and drove throughout this state and talked to people like Antonia Molina in Harlingen, Texas, who's sitting in a small, shack, a small home, a humble home, on Social Security of $762. This governor sits in his mansion 
while he plays his toy soldier game down in Eagle Pass, Texas, trying to convince the world that we're in chaos, along with his friend Donald Trump. This morning, Donald Trump, just yesterday, he says they speak some language from outer space. It's Spanish, ass. It's just Spanish. And my parents, my parents were immigrants to this country. They were immigrants to this country that came from nothing but a third grade education my father had. And he told me, son, you're going to educate yourself. Because they can take away everything from you. But they'll never take away your education. That's what this race is about. It's about the fact that we are all in pain in this country. We are all in pain in this state. It's the pain of these parents. And it's never going to go away. But they're never going to stop advocating for their kids. And they're never going to stop advocating for your kids at home. Because they never want you to go over through the pain that they've had to go through. It's a pain of Kate Cox and every other young lady that's looking for reproductive freedom. It's a pain of a child that's just trying to get through college and pay for it and not be choked by insurmountable debt. It's the pain of just trying to pay your mortgage. People aren't looking for a handout. They're looking for a hand up. They're looking for a chance. And that's what this race was about. It was about progressive values and progressive ideas that said nothing about Democrat or Republican values, but human values. That's what this race is about. And so we have to call on everybody out there listening across this country, on our better angels, because there's a real son of a bitch out there, and his name is Donald Trump. And there's another son of a bitch named Ted Cruz. When I tweeted the other day about our state being broken, he said, well, that's the kind of campaign that our state is broken. Yeah, you broke it, you son of a bitch, but we're not defeated. We are not defeated in this state, and we're not defeated in this country. And we must not allow ourselves, not for one minute or for one second, to accept their narrative, their false narrative, that there's chaos on the border each and every day. I promise you folks in the United States, I represent 400 miles of this border. Laredo's just fine. McAllen and Farr and Brownsville, they're just fine. El Paso's just fine. Del Rio's just fine. But we have a small town in Eagle Pass, Texas, that looks like a movie theater set for an invasion. The vast majority of most days, no one's coming across. But this feeble-minded governor convinced you all that we're in some kind of chaotic situation. Look, this is a country of migrants. It's a country that was built on migrants. It's a country like my father, Fidencio Gutierrez, like my stepmom who raised me, Berta Gutierrez. They came here with nothing on their backs and made everything happen and allowed a son to put himself through college and put himself through law school and make it to city council in this great city and make it to the state house and make it to the state senate. And today sat before you on the last day of his United States Senate run. But I promise you here right now that my fight against Ted Cruz isn't over and my fight against Donald Trump isn't over and my fight against these Republicans isn't over because, folks, they don't give one damn red cent about you. The only thing they care about is money and power. And so for every one of you out back home across this nation that think that the Republican Party has your back, think twice, read a book, read a newspaper, and maybe then you'll realize maybe then for a second you'll realize that you were lied to and you were screwed over and if you're in rural Texas, by God, you've been screwed over more than most. Because the fact is, we can do so much better. And so tonight, and so tonight we congratulate the congressman. And we'll work with him down the road. We'll have some conversations. 
But I want to thank you all for coming. It has been an amazing journey. But as I told you earlier, this race was never about me. This race was about Lexi, it was about Tess, it was about Uzziah, it was about Jackie, it was about Rogelio and Jose, Eliana Torres, Eliana Garcia, Annabelle, it was about Maite, it was about Layla about McKenna, it's about April, it's about Nevaeh, about Xavier, it's about Rogelio, it's about Irma, it's about Ava, it's about so many wonderful kids. I lost their lives on a fateful day. I, I told you I don't cry about elections. It was about Jace, it was about Jayla. But I'll forever cry about these children. Because I saw every bit of it. I'll never take those images out of my mind. I want each one of you back home across this country just for one second just for a moment to put yourselves in the shoes of these in the shoes of these families and think to yourselves what you would do if you sent your little kid to school and all of a sudden in a minute, they were gone and they never came back. I want you, I want you to ask yourselves that. Damn right, we're going to keep fighting for those kids from here and forever. I thank you all for coming out tonight. I appreciate you.